Hello guys, this is Junior from Sourcecraft. We're going to give uh, a minute or two to any other attendees coming in, but thank you so much for joining. We'll start shortly. All right, guys, thank you for joining the webinar. I apologize, I had a little sound there. I'm the product manager for Shadow Space, and I wanted to start out and introduce a little bit of uh, Shadow Space. Okay, so thank you so much for for joining. Uh, the first the first part of our uh, our strategy. I know that a lot of you have been asking, you know, what what is Swordcraft uh, doing? You know this this last year. What what are what are some new things that, that we're coming to the table with? And I wanted to just kind of lay the a quick little foundation and then just kind of go into um, talking on the technical side of, about the demo. But traditionally Sourcecraft has grown from you know we, we had an agent, we had, we're you know we're best in class for that legendary reliability. And and the all the it kind of evolved and as new functionality needed to be added. So over time, it's like, oh, I need to be able to replicate. I need to be able to do these things. Um, okay, let's lay image manager on top of that. It's like, well, now I need to be able to control hundreds and thousands of endpoints. Okay, let's lay shadow control on top of that. So it kind of grew organically. So you have all these different uh, product points. So a lot of what we've undertaken this last year is just a consolidation strategy where we are bringing 
all of the functionality and feature set into a, a common platform. So to give an example, you know, all of those um, those products, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're, you know, this is just putting the old products together with a new shiny front. Uh, this is truly a new platform uh, built from the ground up. And I um, hope you guys will be able to see um, what, what this is like. But that's the idea um, as we're moving forward. So you'll, you'll have Shadow Safe uh, to, to protect, you know, the the SMB MSP space, um, mid market offerings. We've seen that we protected up right now current deployments up to 500 um, VMs that's currently deployed that's been in the field. So uh, we've been GA since uh, August of last year, and we just keep improving the the roadmap and and the product. Um, one of the the first things when we were looking at the platform, they're like, "What what about if we put Shadow Control, and we put all the functionality of Shadow Control into this?" And we we looked at it extensively um, to try to expand that. Um, we found many uh, hindrances that we couldn't add certain things, or um, it, it just became more. And we were like, "That's part of the analysis." That we're like, "Look, let's." Let's start from from the bottom up, and we'll start going with with a new platform. And so the decision was made. So also our new platform, we want it to be built on microservices. Um, so so it's a highly scalable, highly extensible uh, platform, um, and you'll be able to to see uh, there's we can bring out new feature sets and new products uh, really easily because all of these things are decoupled. Um, we just Put a couple of these together, these services, and you know there's a new uh, product offering. So even those microservices, even those uh, microservices, they're um, they're really they're really great for you know like new product, new. You want to put these services in a VM, you want to put them in a Docker container, you want to put them in a, a physical machine. All of those is uh, extremely, extremely easy to do, and and you'll be able to um, to decouple. So part of also those microservices, we want it to be highly scalable. So that we use all the communication uses gRPC. Uh, this is where uh, it's Google, what Google uses in their backend servers to communicate, Google RPC services, and you know it just makes it so it's a high performance uh, communication. And we're able to all all services talk the same language, so getting the information it's really easy. So an example, um, we had you know vCenter and uh, vSphere 6.7 come out, and there's a new API. We go to the vSphere service and we add the new support for the API, and the whole rest of the application had had access to it. So it wasn't like going in and changing in the backup code and then the replication code and all these things to use that. We just change in one place. Uh, what you're going to see in the architecture, just kind of now going to the technical side. What you're going to see this, uh, these VMs um, that we're deploying. So right now, you have an OVA, you have an OVF. Um, there's a, you know, VHDX for for Hyper V. And this VM is kind of the container, and it has these microservices inside. So in, in one of these, this kind of the, the bundle. So the VM is kind of the delivery vehicle for that. Um, and then uh, there's, you know, those services we just turn. It's all the same code. The same microservices are all inside of all things. We just turn, like, light switches on and off. Um, what it looks like um, a shadow safe uh, deployment so uh, this is the we have we have two instances of of management or two management experiences one that's that that's out right now that we're releasing so it's a, a private instance so you deploy this one system VM that's where you're managing everything from you deploy that in your back office and manage so similar to shadow control 
uh, you have it deployed in your back office and then you're managing uh, client sites. <coughs> uh, or what we're coming out later this year is a cloud-based management where you won't have to deploy the management VM in your infrastructure and you can just um, deploy those service nodes um, in each of those sites. So per site, you're going to need a, a service node, um, and that's the service node. That's, it has all the information inside. So think of it kind of like image manager and shadow control and a little bit of uh, SPX all in one. So that's what's going to be uh, driving in, in each site. So in in this example, we're showing. You know, you have a. It will be. This will be your back office if you have um, your own data center. So you're going to deploy a management VM. That's the one system, and then you're you're going to deploy a, a service node uh, to one of the hosts, and then deploy any agents that you want in that environment. Okay. And feel free to be sending questions along the way, and I can be answering as we go as well. Let me pause right there for just some questions on on the architecture and the deployment. Do you have to do you have to have a VM? Yes. So the deployment right now it's a VM, and so you just deploy that VM in your back office, and then you deploy that VM in each of those customer sites. So Windows 10 Pro or above, um, Hyper-V, obviously, and then you're able to take a, install the agents in each of those sites. Uh, the question also, so if it allows having nodes that are not in the same network. So yes, so in this scenario right here, you're in, in your own data center, um, but it does uh, it does allow you to have um, in each of those, you know, those sites that can be uh, natted, uh, they're, they're behind firewalls and all of that. Uh, you deploy a service node there. The service node initiates a communication to wherever you're hosting. So um, if you have a, a DNS or an outside, there's going to be one forward for, forwarded, and then uh, the, it's going to establish a tunnel, and all communication happens. So there's no changing of firewall rules or anything in the customer site. Um, there's just a one change in your own site to to say, okay, when you hit this one system dot msp dot com uh, forward to this internal address, and then that's it. So as soon as it hits to that folder, it's going to get um, a tunnel is going to get created, and then it's going to be all communication will go that way. Great questions, and keep them coming, guys. I'll, I'll keep answering uh, along the way. The, another question: Will you still have uh, one system hosted? in your data center if your MSP uses cloud services. Yes. Um, so one system is the it's it's the management experience where you're going to access the UI and, and view all the data protection, assign policies and all of that. Um, the cloud services you still have to have a secondary um, a secondary portal, you could say, uh, in case of a disaster, right? If if your your if your one system and primary everything goes down uh, you don't have that site anymore. You still need a, a, a public place to go and, and access and uh, be able to do your DR as a service. The, what we will have uh, later in the year when we're when we're bringing cloud services together um, in under the one system umbrella. So imagine the the cloud services UI and everything today. It's going to get changed to a shadow safe like UI that's it's all integrated and it'll be a single portal. So at that point, when and when it's in the cloud uh, later this year, it's going to be all the same. It's converging all into the same portal and UI. Great questions, guys. Okay. So 
so one of the things that uh, as as we were going through this, we we wanted to to hold true to the you know unchanged core values that we had with our with our agent based protection. Um, you know we were we know we're best in class. We know the even when we add host based protection, there is still a value for depending on the use case to use an agent, and some people even prefer that method. So. So if it's a mission critical VM, we say, yeah, use our agent. If it's transactional, use our agent. Um, all of that, um, it's going to be the you know the best VSS integration, application consistency, all the things that you guys know. Um, what we wanted to do is like we start with that core, and then we layer on top um, some of these things like the SLA-based management and protection, uh, seamless integration with our cloud services. Um, all of those things um, just add to uh, our core values. And then while enriching some of functionality, you know, like uh, making our virtual boot better and all of those things, um, we wanted to also bring some brand new capabilities. And so that's where we added the host base protection, the agentless for uh, vCenter. Um, this you can you can use in the same environment, you can be protecting uh, VMware and Hyper-V seamlessly. You can be protecting VMs and agents seamlessly. Um, there's no difference uh, for that. We want to bring also some, um, you know, unified experience, uh, PKI, some things that you guys have been requesting for us for a long time, uh, PKI-based encryption. Um, so every microservice, um, so it's always encrypted channels between the services, and so um, everything has um, has security. Um, it, we just couldn't do that with uh, SPX and Image Manager and Shadow Control, and, and trying to bring it all into into a platform. But now that we have the platform built from the ground up, uh, we're able to add all those things. Uh, also, you know, in-flight uh, data verification. Um, we wanted to not only when you know, verifying when images land on the other side, but we wanted to do uh, we wanted to do a in-flight uh, verification. So we make sure that a, if if one one bit or one packet gets dropped along the way, you don't have to send you know a terabyte of data to figure out, and then you have to process a terabyte of data to say, oh, this byte was flipped or this packet never came. And so what we wanted to do is just, you know, through the transfer, we can check that we, you know, if something doesn't make it or gets corrupted in flight, we sent the, we sent, we resend the the right uh, data, and then you you're not end up with these, you know, kind of half replications that went, and then you kind of have to fix and roll back. Um, as a question, uh, will it support? Uh, Virtual boot for Hyper-V. Yes. So in this release, uh, we we added the the support for virtual boot from Hyper-V, and and you'll be able to to test that. Um, just a, a quick little example of what the just to give you an idea of those services we were talking about. Um, this is SPX versus the the Storage Craft agent. Um, when we went through, we went through the list and we're like, what is it that people love about the, the MSI, you know, but about SPX? Is that the UI? We're like, nope. Is it the service? No. Is the CAPI and licensing? No. SP run? No. And then we got it down to, it's like, is it our, our snapshot driver, you know, our uh, integrity, our VSS integration, all that? Yes. Okay. We'll bring that over. So we started from that and then we put a, Two little uh, gRPC services on top, so you can see kind of the installer, even the size, you know, 53 megabytes versus 13, and then uh, the even the idle size on those, it's uh, really small, so two megabytes versus 55. So that's kind of the idea. We wanted to, um, you know, so you can definitely see like this is not just oh grab SPX and shove it into this product. Um, we really went through uh, a rearchitecture and, and make sure that we have we have it in a way that's modern that we can move forward and um, you know future proof uh, a lot. So we're I don't know if uh, there's in storage storage newsletter there was a, an article like we we're one of the first 
um, data protection companies to use microservices in data protection. And that's something that's uh, pretty cool. You'll see uh, more of that. The, the benefits that come from that, the future proofing, the adding new APIs, adding new functionality, we can add those things so quick and uh, we're able to put deliver the same the same benefits, the same features in different platforms. So um, really cool. So right now we have, with our OneSafe, we have it in a Docker container. Um, so I imagine kind of like image manager and running inside of a Docker, right? <laughs> so the image manager functionality of, you know, the replication and all of that. So we have these services and they're, uh, they're running in a Docker. We have it in a, uh, a VM right now, um, and we have some other delivery mechanisms that's going to come later in the year as well. Okay, so I'm just going to do a, a quick little, little demo of what it is to get started, and then um, you know we'll just keep going with questions, keep sending those questions, and then I'll be answered um, on those. Um, I'll go over kind of any known issues, and then what we we expect out of the beta. So. We really care about great feedback. So that's what I, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate over to the screen here. Um, this is the new the new agent installer. Okay, so just to give a, um, a an idea of, of how you'll be going about. So with the agent, uh, you're gonna download that. Um, I'll give you the link to download. And <laughs> let me run it again. Apologize, guys. I'm just uh, finding the file here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, since we're over here, let's uh, let's show this. So this is the Searchcraft uh, repo. I'll make it bigger. Uh, in here, you guys are going to be able to so just download the searchcraft.com slash safe. Uh, you're going to see the the release versions of, of what we release. And then you see this at beta. Oh. OK, so I apologize for that. So here's the Here's the actual. People are like, I can't see anything. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Um, downloads of searchcraft.com slash safe. And in the repo, you're going to find here's our all of our versions. And then there's this little channel right here, the at beta channel. And in the beta channel, you're going to see the beta 2x. And in here, you, this is the breakdown of, of, uh, of the, the shadow safe. Uh, v2 product. So you have the Win directory that has the MSI. So this is where the agent, you're going to download this. Uh, you have also a deploy tool um, to pushing it into your VMware um, environments as well the, to push service nodes to that. You also have in here um, Hyper-V. This is where the, we host the VHDX that's going to get imported into Hyper-V for the shadow safe for the one system VM and for the service node. And then some of the others um, are more relevant to updating the actual appliance and, and all of that. So that's the repo stuff. So in here, just going through, I'm gonna download the uh, build 72. Notice that there's like 19, 35, 72. These are 
I'll be able to push uh, a build out, and then you guys can update to that without having to redeploy. Um, but agents, you will have to download um, the agent that they're trying out. And so let me run this MSI. Okay. I'll minimize this. Okay, so the MSI, just uh, as a quick getting started, you're just going to go next, read the whole beta testing agreement. Next. Um, this is the, some of the wording is going to change, uh, but to give an idea, those three pieces that we talked about, um, the agent, this is if you're going to install just the agent. Um, Shadow safe for this is actually one system. So it's going to change over here, but just remember this is where you're deploying the first management experience. So if, if you're deploying for the first time, you want to deploy this first, and then for any customer side or another uh, environment, you can deploy service nodes and connect those to your one system instance. But this will be the, the first one you start out with, shuttle safe, and it's going to test if you have Hyper-V installed and you go for that. Once you have that through, any new agents that you install, it's going to tell you, okay, where's the your uh, director host, you know, what's, what's the location, so IP or uh, DNS, you know, what's the fingerprint, what's the token that, that you have in there, and what's the site that you want to register to, and then it installs. So, any questions, guys, on the... Okay, can you enlarge the screen? Yes, I'll try to do my best. <laughs> okay. Um, some questions of how do you gather uh, that info on the last page? Um, and yes, I can post that link. So let's do this. Let me post a link right now on the chat. So everyone has it. So download build 72. So 2.1.0.72 Win64 MSI. Um, and then we'll talk about some uh, known issues uh, for that as well. Basically Windows 10 and above. Uh, so 2012 and above, those will be the ones that uh, you can install. When we launch, we're going to have Windows 7, but right now Windows 7, there's a known bug on that, and so just Windows 10 or Windows 2012 are uh, 2012 and above with Hyper-V. Um, I'm, I'm just hitting the, the web address, so once it gets deployed, you're going to go through the web address, the first uh, initial experience there. You can authenticate with your, your partner credentials that you have uh, with StorageCraft, and then I'll show you where you're going to find the information. So the question was, where do I find the information to put in when I install the agent? So if you go under configuration, um, we have, um, right now it says deploy, but it's actually sites. This is a, a version that, this is the GA version. And then in there, you, this is where you're going to find the fingerprint and your StorageCraft um, agent token registration. Um, so some of the questions, so people that have experience deploying uh, with the deploy tool, uh, they're asking if, if it's, if does this replace the deploy tool if you're deploying in a Hyper-V environment? So yes, yeah, so in a Hyper-V environment, um, it's it's taking the same functionality of the deploy tool um, that you've experienced in a, a vCenter, a VMware environment, and it deploys into a Hyper-V environment. All right, guys. Okay, so this so is a, a final final slide. So, so any questions, um, keep sending to me. 
um, how we're going to gather the feedback. This this is the most important part, right? I, we're doing this so we can get your feedback, and you know we've we've selected uh, you guys from from our partners, and you know have been referred uh, from sales. So thank you for for the time of of doing this. We are excited, and I do want to gather that um, officially. So there is an official way. So I'm going to send you a link to uh, a survey monkey. So in a day or so, um, I'm going to send you that link, and then you know just fill out. It's just a six questions, uh, seven question survey, and just to kind of rate the experience, you know, deployment and and going through all of that stuff. So that's how we, we like to gather all the 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 feedback, and then also if you have any issues, uh, feel free to email me, uh, junior dot silva at storagecraft dot com. Uh, we can talk about hey, it'd be really nice to have this or any of those things. Uh, those same questions and and feature requests and things like that are going to be in the Survey Monkey. So make sure you have them over there. Even if you told me uh, on an email or anything like that, make sure it's on that survey monkey because that's where we're going to be kind of gathering all of those things together. <clears throat> There's a question, is agentless only available at VMware? So at the moment, yes, but we are coming out with uh, in a subsequent release with uh, host-based uh, protection for Hyper-V. To give an idea, we've we've had uh, since um, since August we've had five releases, so we're iterating really fast. Um, so in a subsequent release, what you guys can expect is uh, major releases in May and November. So major features, major things, May and November, and then uh, maintenance release in between that. So every every three months, there's a new release to the platform. And you guys will be able to take advantage of any new features that are coming into that platform. Um, the question is, when you first deploy a director, where does the initial fingerprint come from, from the director to fingerprint? So when you first deploy the, they, they mentioned director here, but it's a uh, one system. When you first deploy one system, it doesn't have, it, it creates its own, um, fingerprint right of the deployment and so it, it's that's how it starts and so there's nothing that you're not passing it in it just when you um, just the fact that you deployed it you go in there and there's already a fingerprint that's why it self-generated a, um, a fingerprint ID and everything service nodes require to be able to register into the system um, they require to you know to say just to avoid man in the middle attacks, right? It's the you know, do you who you're trying to register to, and then on the other side, it's like, do I trust that you're trying to register to me, the one system versus the service node? Um, so that's why those two pieces of information um, they cross each other and validate each other. Okay, um, I'll keep answering any questions uh, along the way. But a known issue is the when you're deploying the agent um, right now, make sure that you're deploying in a, just a random test VM um, or machine that it's Windows 10 or uh, Windows 2012 um, and up. And uh, right now we have a known issue of uninstalling where there's there's some functions that we're trying to figure out of uninstalling that and there's a uh, known issue that it doesn't install in windows 7 so if you try to do it in windows 7 it's gonna it's gonna give you an error saying it's missing some dll's uh, so just make sure you do that and uh yeah if any more questions over here I think we've talked about most of these already. They're, they're kind of questions about the deploy tool, the tokens, where to find them, how to deploy them. Yep, so again, go to our repo, um, download from the, the beta channel. 
actually let me show that part as well. So if I'm if I'm in the repo, right, I'm gonna be subscribing to a channel to this guy. So at beta, that's the channel that I, I'm gonna be subscribing to. So after you deploy, uh, when you come into configuration and here's your service nodes, all of them are by site, all of them are there. There's this edit upgrade channel right here in the top right. And when you hit this, if you notice the upgrade channel right now, it's to the GA channel, but you could just, um, you can paste the copy and paste from, you know, to, to register to the beta channel. And then it, it will keep you any uh, new builds that get popped in there. Um, I can be, I can be releasing every day if I wanted to. Obviously, I'm going to wait a couple of days and then release something new. Um, but if you're already subscribed to that channel and you select this version, any new builds, it will show you as an update um, that you can do. So, and the way that it will show you is is inside of this. If you launch Cockpit, um, Cockpit is kind of the management experience to the to for the root access. It gives you a terminal and all that through a web. So when you go in there, uh, it's going to give you the saying, hey, there's an update available. Um, some questions, are there any docs available regards to setting up a system from scratch? Um, I, can, I can put a little document and I'll send it to the participants. Basically, just to show again, the from scratch, it's going to be in the beta channel. Download the, the MSI. Deploy the shadow safe option right now. It's one system. Okay, deploy that middle option. It'll come up. It'll say, you know, log in with your Swordcraft account, which you, you should all have the same as your partner zone. Log in with that. And then inside, when it's deployed, there's a little um, icon over here. There's four steps that says, hey, you know, add, add an environment to be protected or add service nodes, add storage, where you're going to back up to. And then uh, you can deploy service nodes in different sites and agents to be protected. So that's the, that's the, the critical path all the way through, but I'll put a little something and send it out as well. Okay, guys, well, if uh, there's no additional questions, again, feel free to reach out to me, junior.silva, S-I-L-V-A, at storagecraft.com, and we're excited to get your feedback. Thanks so much, and, you know, I always say I'd rather have quality feedback than, you know, spend 10 hours or 20 hours doing something. Um, I don't care if you spend one or two hours that it's it's a valuable feedback and so as long I'm looking for quality feedback I'm looking for um, you know objective uh, feedback and and figuring out which you know what what is working what's not working what do we need to change and how do we move forward so thank you so much guys for for joining us and uh, you have access now the, the it's Post it in the public repo. So downloads at searchcraft.com slash safe and uh, download the MSI. And I'd love to hear from you. All right. Okay. Thanks so much.